Hello and welcome back to the Metropol Grid. My name is Andre. My tattoo says Patrick, but I can't remember anything. <laughs> Thanks so much for tuning in. This is round match two, game two. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes, everybody clap. Clap for he Andre. He said that with confidence. Um, and yeah, the, thanks for watching. This is the top table on the left. That is me. I am playing my pride and joy, Titan Transnational. Always right. playing Titan. And on the right. your best friend. Yeah. Uh, I know him, her very well. Uh, and on the right, we have Nadim. Nadim is playing prepaid Kate. Uh, right. We saw this in game, the second game of the BD Cosmos Summer Kit 3. And I don't think we saw any cool data and destiny stuff inside this Kate. I don't think we Kate. did. I think it's a pretty traditional, pretty strong prepaid Kate deck. Yeah. Um, Nadim actually did, um, t we talked about this, and he says that he's going to change it. I think, uh, yeah, Shrike is a good Shrike prepaid is a nice thing. Isn't it? Prepaid nice thing, intro. but uh, we'll see how things go. So on the left, I am playing Titan, and I am doing something a bit different. Uh, the second game also of this BD Cosmos three was Titan versus uh, Prepaid Kate as right. well. That was Scott playing Titan, and that game did go a bit long. Which, uh, without spoilers, I don't think Titan is or Wayland in general is really good at going to the late game. No, which does influence heavily how I play my Wayland games. This is a rush deck. Yeah, yeah, it's a cool. super rush deck. I want to score three agendas as fast as possible. That makes sense. It seems like Wayland's best option right now. They've yeah. got the solid and the runs. Yep. That crumble later on. Yeah, because like a spider web turn one is kind of difficult to deal with. Yep. You need to get out that lady. You need to use two tokens off the bat, and that puts you into good position. What uh, else is spider web good against other than lady? It's good against Faust and lady. It's fine but against. It's, it's good against Faust. It's good against lady. It's still fine against Crota. It's still three credit attacks. But it's more expensive than Wall of Static. But only one time. credit. No, it's... Oh, oh, yeah, for less stacks. I guess yeah, I'd compare it to Bastion, then. Wait, it's in which case, it would be the same. very similar to Bastion. Wait, how many subs is on Spiderweb 2? So Spiderweb has three subs. Three subs, yeah. So it's even better than Bastion, right? As, if you're comparing it with Corroder, it, it isn't. I think Bastion yeah, costs because three. It's, yeah. Spiderweb costs three. No, Spiderweb costs four. It's strength three. No, it's Spiderweb's strength two. Oh, you might be right. I know I'm Oh, right. you're totally right. Yeah, yeah okay. Absolutely. That's embarrassing. Let it be known. I have three spider webs in this deck, maybe. No, we'll see. <laughs> um, looks like I am taking the mulligan. Yeah. Uh, pre pick eight is off. So, another problem... Okay, so in my deck, I am running a bit of the meat damage kit. And that is the problem with the meta right now, let alone uh, with something like prepaid Kate, is that it's really easy to throw just a Plascrete on the table and then be good for uh, the entirety of the game. Right. Because as long as you don't... Um, as long as you don't dip to less than three cards in hand and you keep like a, a decent amount of economy, there's not too much that you can do about it with the Sea Sword Scorch Scorch combo. No, that's true. Uh, but then you're relying on the fact that they are being a little bit more careful. They they did have to spend some time putting the Yeah, it there. does slow you down and starts allows you to rush, but I do have a little way to get around the Plast Creed. Oh, do you? Yeah. Um, I have built my deck basically to fight all the flaws that I think... Wayland has without still going to late game because that's a completely different deck. So this is how hard we rush. We draw a card, take some money, put a piece of ice on that server. Cool. Um, I'm hoping Nadim does play the professional contacts, gets a real slow start. Yeah. It's good for the late game, but um, it's not going to help right now. And Class Creek turn one, there you go. That's the problem. Like, Sea Sword Scorch is no longer a thing. Nope. And that only costs Nadim two credits and a click, which with the Kate, which is not too bad at all. But he also didn't... Uh, go through your R and D. Yeah, didn't go through your HQ. That's true. That's true. Uh, I, I'm not worried about HQ pressure against uh, shapers. R and D could have been a thing. Looks like we're gonna fast track an Atlas. Uh, no subtlety here. Nope. Put that card into your hand. Shuffle it a wee bit. Uh, maybe there's a mind game here. I don't know. Uh, oh, icing up that server a little bit more. Another piece of ice and probably the Atlas. I don't know. So if Nadim can break two pieces of ice or remove all of my money or most of my money, that is going to be an Atlas token on turn three. Right. If I were him, I'd, just, I'd probably just go for R&D and HQ right now. But Yeah, maybe. You can maybe force a res on something, but oh, it looks like, yeah, Nadim is going to put the R&D interface, go for what he knows he can do. Jackson Howard on the top is going to be fine. And this is the first oh, weird no. card. Oh, yeah. no. Here we go. Wait. Andre, what have you done? <laughs> so, Titan is the king of combo decks, which is really why I like it. And that's Accelerated Diagnostics, which is basically the accelerated beta test of operations, if you haven't seen that. <laughs> yeah, and our channel is the Cadillac of Netrunner videos. Yeah, I think Cadillacs are good, right? I haven't... I don't know, I'm not yeah, a card person. Yeah, I'm not a card person. <laughs> um, I know that Cadillacs and Dinosaurs go well together. 
What? That's a, you know what? Wrap yeah, okay. up, explain later. Yeah, sure. Um, advanced shipment from Sansan is going to let me score an Alice and get economy. that token for only one credit. I didn't even have to res any of that ice. You didn't. So we're still in the bank. Um, Nadim is, can see one more card off of R&D. Based on the way I'm playing, I think there are no agendas in HQ unless this is a real good bluff, which, you know, it could be. Hey, you're such a good player. I wouldn't uh, put it past you. Uh, Accelerated Diagnostics into a Cyberdex Virus Suite. No viruses on the table. But is he going to trash it to make R&D a little bit sweeter? Yeah, I think is. you could, because that means next turn, if I don't ice up, you'll see two cards. In fact, you could run again this turn. Right. Uh, the Cyberdex also does stop Fast Advance, and with that Atlas, I think a lot of times in Titan, you can expect Fast Advance. Yeah, that is a nice strategy with Atlas, yeah. uh, with uh, Titan. With uh, If you have a shipment in a server and the runner can't trash it, every turn you can score it. Uh, right, you mean uh, the Sans End Grid. Yeah, sorry, Sans yeah. End Grid. And We're hey, fast-tracking again. Yeah, oh, there we go, okay. This is the kind of uh, rush that I like playing. Uh, I'm going to use a second fast-track to get the hostile takeover. I don't want to wait to draw that. I did shuffle R&D, but it doesn't matter because he's going to see two new cards anyways. Right. Uh, let's do a bit of a hand shuffle, I guess. Install into the remote. Who knows what that card is? I don't. Yeah, uh, I guess neither of us actually know. I keep my cards facing the table. Three credits. Nadim is safe behind that blast gate, but not much else he can do right now except see two cards right. off of R&D. And like with your max deck, he suddenly realized he's playing against something very strange. Yeah. And I, I can't even imagine what's going through his head right now. Partly so because he's so much better than I am at that runner and... He's a very, very he's, strong he's player, a, uh, Patrick. A, you sorry, you have to value your skill as a Netrunner player. I know, but... An another really cool thing here, though. Oh, it looks like Nadim actually is going to check that server. Uh, Caduceus is not the best against a linked-up runner like Kate. Uh, that Trace 3 is going to fire unboosted. Hopefully. You know what? It's still medium taxing. It's still medium taxing. And the thing, as soon as you put a Mimic out, that's fine. Two yeah, credits. two credits. That's fine. It looks like I'm going to basically be able to res that for free. Uh, Trace through is the interesting one. There is still one piece of ice behind that server, and right. Nadim does not have a way through it. You're Hopefully, by one. I'm going to pay by one. I'll have six credits left at the end of the day. Remember, if that is a hostile, I will need two credits to score it. Nadim could just pay one credit to get through here and probably make me spend more money on the next piece of ice. Sure. Uh, he's thinking about it. He's thinking. So that's the thing about this rush deck and leaving R&D open. All right, he's paid for it. So he's paid. Oh, he paid two credits. Sorry for that. And we do hit a spider web, which is going to end the run real, real good. I do have the two credits left necessary to score the hostile, so things are good. Oh, wow. And look at that money. That's nice. That is some good follow-up money. So you'll notice, based off if you've ever seen Nadim or any other Montreal high-level uh, shaper play before, is that it's like turn four, and there's almost nothing on the table on the shaper side. Besides a plasticrete, sure. And yeah. normally you like you would play for the late slow game where you install the proco, you click up, yeah, and then you you go for that the late game that food coats is going to drag you through the mud, you right. know, anything like that. But against this, Nadim smartly does play differently. Luckily for me, the proco builds aren't as good against this kind of rush deck. Sure, because they slow they slow them down. Yeah, you are going to do most of your work in the early game. Right. The other option you have is you can do a quality time uh, events type runner. Sure. Uh, looks like there's a sea source off the top of R&D. Nadim, cool. not going to care so much. Slowly build up his money right, with that dirty laundry. The with the Plascrete, you're generally okay. Um, but already with three points, that SMC is coming up. So usually one piece of ice is not going to keep Nadim out of a server with efficient money. Okay, just a Jenkson. Yeah. If that was an Atlas, we could have something here. I could actually start chaining those Atlases. But with that SMC, I don't think it's the best idea. No, you, you never know. He might... Because you could uh, just well, Yeah, he, he pay. might be able to get in. Yeah, I think he could be able to get in. Uh, let's hit up that restructure. 16 credits to 5. Again, that plat screen makes that C source that I'm going to draw in one click. Or right. did I just draw it? Uh, not that effective. I think I drew it with uh, Jackson. All right, he's spending all his money on... No, he just moved no, his money. Moved okay. Yeah, yeah. And one bad pub. So giving one bad pub with a hostile takeover is actually pretty bad against Shaper. Oh, yeah. They've like, got a lot of ways to, to use that bad pub. More yeah. Than the, yeah. They've got a more natural ways to use it than even Anarchs do, I'd say. Yeah, very much so. With the SMC, the clone ship, maybe even a personal workshop. I don't think there's sure. personal workshop in this deck, but that is the thing you got to watch out for. Uh, play some of that nice ev uh, event economy with nine credits. You can just continue on R&D. This seems suspicious. I'm, I'm suspicious, and yeah. I, I, I'm looking at you right now. <laughs> 
HQ also wide open. I think Nadim has seen most of the cards in my hand, so he's not that concerned about it. Now, at the time you recorded this, um, you had a bit of a mustache, and I can almost see off camera you twirling it like some sort of snidely whiplash character. Yeah, I honestly, this was November, which is the month that we grow mustaches. Right. I'm still uh, working on last year's in November, but... <laughs> but, uh, I think uh, running R&D, the SMC is going to pop. Yeah, and he's using that bad pub. Yeah, exactly. That run is economy form. Yeah, that run is technically a credit used in there. Uh, that's just to pull out the data sucker. I think that's really good early. Sure. Oh, okay. Atlas off the okay. top. I would have loved to draw that. Sure, you don't want to lose the Atlas. Yeah, and a shipment from Sans End just behind that. And he gets a token on that Data Sucker. So Data that Sucker, farming Data Sucker early is really good. It does shut down any uh, scary ice later on in the game. Right. If you do run into uh, an Archer, you can just admin four and some Data Suckers through it. Sure. However, I am running CBS, so you have to be a bit mindful. Yeah. You don't want to face plant into he's something. He's one of them. People don't usually have more than one. Yeah, that's true. Boy, that's he's true. got... Funny card sleeves. You know what? I have almost four points of agendas in hand. I have a hostile takeover and I have a food. Oof. And I'm just not icing. I don't care. Wow. I think Nadim's going to... Yeah, he did see a lot of R&D. I think it's a safe bet to say things are okay. Right. So I guess you've had those in hand for a long time then. Yeah. Yep. Um, with the clone chip, you the SMC is basically still on the table, I think. Right. Also, clock could be on the table. If there's clot in this. Uh, Nadim is going to poke... Archive, seeing that I threw out the Scorch Earth, that's pretty okay. good. Yeah, he's going to breathe a sigh of relief. Yeah, get a data second token. Those should be face-up. Those yeah, should be face-up, yeah. Um, so, that's okay. It looks like the Scorch plan has taken a backseat due to that nice uh, Plascrete armor. Right, that spiderweb is now parasite food. Yeah, that, exactly. With that, that's a really good point. With that data sucker, that spiderweb is generally easier to get parasited through. I don't know, maybe even Inti is in this deck. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Inti could work. Uh, Croder also, because sometimes the Lady Tokens are um, do get a bit prohibitive. Right. But here you go. There's the the first head, the first dog head, uh, right. Lady. Uh, bite is definitely worse than its bark. I think that the dog head sounds like the god head, so I feel like there's some sort of religious pun I can make, but I'm not trying to offend anyone. That's that's probably safe. <sighs> there is a nice on R&D. looks like I probably did draw something nice for that. Um... Let's see here. I think Nadim might have one too many cards in hand. Throws out the Gordian Blade. Okay. Well, he trusts Wayland's not going to have a, a potent uh, code gate to deal with. Yeah, there's not too much to deal with. I think uh, if you're lucky, you get a wormhole up. Right. And we are off to the races. Nadim actually did make a run on Archives. He did. He made so a successful run. the C operatives are on his back now. Trace 3. I only have to boost to Trace 7 to make sure that lands on the linked up. Leaving you with a... Nadim. Good amount of money. It leaves me with a lot of money. Nadim is a bit confused. Right. Uh, not many resources to trash, but uh, this is the the brilliance that you can pull off. You, Project right. Alice can pull anything. You've used your Project Alice to pull out a power shutdown. That's what? Yep. So power shutdown combo is real, and I think it's something that's quite strong in our meta right now. People are not expecting it. Uh, a little bit of a zap is going to trash the entirety of my deck. <laughs> you really loved doing that little animation, didn't you? <laughs> yep. That's about 20 cards. So there's no more R&D left. Uh, Nadim has to trash a program or hardware. It's not going to matter. Jackson is going to be popped. So you're Jacksoning one Scorched Earth. One Scorched Earth and two face down cards. We don't know what those are. We have no idea what those could be. But I do have an accelerated diagnostics in hand, so I can play yeah, all three it. cards. He knows, what's, he knows what's coming. Yeah, something bad could be <laughs> happening. Do you cut. want to cut, Nadim? I think Nadim has cut reconsidered. Oh, okay. And uh, no, okay, we're gonna oh. tap on my deck. Uh, third click for one credit. Let's play accelerated diagnostics. Yep. Top three cards of R and D if their operations can be played. And you know what? I think I might have stacked the deck a bit of my favor. That's true. You, yeah, there was a little, little bit of deck stacking. Triple scorched earth. Not only is that building burnt up, all the buildings are burnt up. It's been vaporized. That is really rough. Um, let's do 12 meat damage for one click. And that'll get you through Plastic Carapace. Yeah, I'm picturing the uh, alien ship over the White House in Independence Day. <laughs> the big laser comes down. Yep. So That was my laser sound effect. <laughs> that's how I've been playing Titan. And yeah, I, it's cool. been working really well for me. They I are have... a good combo deck. Yeah. They've got, they've got the tools built in that you get combo pieces up there. Exactly. It started with me being uh, struggling to score hostile takeovers against Clot, so I started putting shipments in. Yeah. And then I realized you could do some really ridiculous things. Uh, another piece of this combo puzzle is that there's two vanity projects in the deck, which is r largely why I leave R&D so open, is that the agenda density is actually really low, yeah, considering I also had four points in my hand. 
Um, so the other option is that if they if the kill is not on the table, you can accelerate a diagnostics combo and score a vanity project because you have three shipments from Samson. Exactly. Then puts two advancement tokens on it, and vanity project needs six advancement tokens. So, so th that's perfect, and that's the idea is I can rush to three points and right. then score a vanity to go straight to seven. You do have to play around clot, which with two CVSs is very much possible. Sure. You have two CVSs. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah. You need the CVSs. Do you? Um, do you win more by scorching or by scoring vanity project? It depends on the matchup and it okay. depends on the player. It's it's almost entirely up to the player next to me. Sure. Like you need two plascretes to avoid the scorch, which buys me a large window. I think it's really hard to get those two plascretes out right. early. And if you suspect they have I've had worse in hand, I'm yeah. assuming you won't. I would go for the score. Yeah. yeah. Well, hey, thanks so much for watching. Uh, stay tuned. We're gonna have uh, two more, ma uh, a couple more matchups at the BD Cosmos sure. Summer Kit. Three, four, five. I think it's four. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys. Ciao.